What's going on everybody? This is Chris with Eddie's Speed Garage and today we're working on a 2013 Chevy Malibu. We have the service stability track light on and the car needs some rear brakes. So we got our scanner here. You can see that we got a left rear wheel speed sensor circuit signal erratic. So we're going to go look at the left wheel wheel speed sensor and see what's going on there. So here we are on the left rear wheel and you can see that the wheel speed sensor has some chunks missing out of it. As you spin it around you can see right here we can get the camera to focus and focus in on there. This is your part of your sensor, the magnetic pickup that it reads to see how fast your wheels are turning and it's missing a chunk out of it so we'll have to put a new wheel bearing in to fix that concern. Alright so here's our brand new wheel bearing you can see the sensor goes all the way around and actually turns with the the wheel bearing or the wheel hub so we'll just put this in I'll show you guys how to install it remove the old one and also show you how to do brakes while we're at it all right, YouTube, so here's our brake rotor. You can see why we need to replace the the brakes on it. It's got a pretty bad rust ridge on it. The car sat for about eight months without being driven, so the rotor's got a lot of rust on them, and it's warped, and you can feel, feel it in the, the brakes when you're braking. There's a pulsation. So let's go ahead and start taking these apart. We have a 13 millimeter bolt here on the caliper and a 13 millimeter bolt there. We're gonna go ahead and loosen those up and then we'll remove the caliper and then start taking the caliper bracket off. Looks like we're going to need to take a screwdriver and push the pads in and release the caliper so we can pull it off the rotor. Alright, so we got our screwdriver. Usually stick it in between here and catch one of the pads and then just pry on it a little bit. Might push it back. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting a whole lot because these rear calipers have to be screwed back in. so. We're just going to take the screwdriver driver and work the caliper off. There we have our caliper off. You can see there's notches in there to turn the, the piston back in. I'll show you how to do that shortly. So now we got to take our caliper bracket off. So we're going to have two bolts here. It's so a 18 millimeter hex there and a, another 18 millimeter. We'll take those off. You gotta use a wrench because this uh, upper control arm bolt kind of gets in the way of your socket. So take that and we'll start unbolting those. So yeah, here we go with the top bolt. Loosening it up with the wrench. bottom bolt you can get with the uh, ratchet in the socket. So now we got both of our caliper bolts out. We can take our screwdriver, put it about there, try not to hit the dust shield too much. And we can pry this caliper bracket off. Here's your caliper bracket off. I didn't take the pads out yet because it's easier when they're rusted in there like that. Just take a hammer here and hit them in. There's one. 
try not don't don't hit on these pins that wouldn't be really good you want to try and keep that area smooth and clean so it can mate back up properly okay, youtube so now all we have left to do is take off the rotor and we'll have access to our wheel bearing you can see it's held on by a t30 torx bit there so we'll unscrew that and then we'll hammer this rotor off here we go i knocked it loose with the ratchet held the rotor in place with the screwdriver and we'll just unscrew this guy and we'll take preferably a four pound hammer and knock this rotor off you don't want to be using like a carpenter handle hammer or anything like that hey youtube so here's our hammer this is about a three pound you want something substantial to hit these these rotors off because they can be pretty hard sometimes so you're going to take your hammer and you'll hit right about here in between the two caliper mounting spots there and then uh we'll have uh, access to our wheel bearing right, youtube so this one only took about two hits it wasn't stuck on there that bad as you can see we have our rust ridge on the rotors that's why we're getting our pulsation and rough braking but here we have our wheel bearing that we're going to replace I recommend spraying some penetrant oil on the, the three yeah, it looks like three bolts that mount it in they mount up right in the back here there's one of the bolts so just spray some penetrating oil on them and then start cranking them loose all right so to get this top wheel bearing bolt out all the way we're gonna have to take this bolt for the upper control arm out and get the control arm just a little bit out of the way all right so we got the upper control arm bolt out of the way now we'll just need to remove the three wheel bearing bolts they're all 18 millimeter all right youtube so we got all three bolts out of the wheel bearing now all that's left is to hit it off with a hammer it'll, it'll take about your same hand hammer you used for your wheel bearing and hit right about there just keep hitting that area until it comes out try to make sure your feet or anything over here aren't in the way because this thing's going to come out and they're they're not too light so it'll break anything over there all right youtube so that's the wheel well the knuckle with the wheel bearing removed but before we put the new one back in we're going to want to clean up all of that rust and corrosion with like a carbide bit just uh cleaning all the way around there be careful not to catch the sensor there then we can put the new one back in tighten everything down and put the brakes back together all right youtube so you can see we got that pretty cleaned up now we're going to take our new wheel bearing we'll set it in there and then well you got to make sure make sure you don't forget to put in your your backing plate you might have to take that off to clean up some spots if you hit missed with the hammer like I did but if you did miss you can just take your hammer put it on a flat surface and that'll smooth that back out for installation so you'll put that back up on there like that then you'll put your wheel bearing on put your bolts through don't tighten any of them down yet but get them all started and then you'll tighten each one just a little and pull the wheel bearing into the knuckle so depending how good you get it cleaned up you might be able to just push the wheel bearing right up into the knuckle and it'll sit flush this one is sitting pretty close to flush so we're still going to go around and tighten each bolt slowly until it is completely flush with the knuckle we don't want to get it in there sideways so we got all of our wheel bearing bolts tightened down there's three of them we got the, all of those so next we're just gonna take this lower control arm we're gonna have to try and line it up with the knuckle throw the bolt in back through this way and you might need some help to actually pry the knuckle 
towards the inside of the car because it's not quite lined up anymore after we took the bolt out. So with help from a friend, you just need to pry the knuckle that way and then get the bolt at least started and then you can hammer it in and it'll, it'll go all the way through. Then you'll just tighten this nut down, hold the bolt, tighten it down, and then we can put our brakes back together. So here's your upper control arm bolt tightened down. As with anything on vehicles, they all have a torque spec. I recommend that you look them up and get a torque wrench to tighten all of these bolts down. I'm not using any torque specifications in this video because I am a experienced technician and I know the, the feel, I guess you could say, of how tight these bolts should be. So like I said earlier, I was going to show you how to screw that piston back into the caliper with the notches. So there's a tool here that you can get at your local Harbor Freight by Maddox Tools. Open it up. You've got your instructions, stuff like that. Um, so you just select the adapter that'll fit on your car. It's looking like six, six might might work for us. We'll uh, set the camera up here and I'll show you how it's done. So, take your caliper and you'll match it up to the notches. So yeah, it looks like. Six is gonna fit. The six fits in there, can't turn it. So now I'll go over my tool kit. And we're going to put it together. So here you have this plate here that's gonna sit against the caliper teeth here. I'll show you how it all looks put together. So here's what the tool looks like all put together. You'll have your first little uh, adapter piece in the, t in the grooves of the, the caliper piston and then you'll put your little plate on the end. You'll put it on the handle side push it up and then it'll stop right about here and then you'll take this and turn it left or counterclockwise to tighten it up against the caliper so you can turn the piston back in. So here's our caliper with the, the piston pushed back in. You're gonna turn the tool clockwise and it'll screw the the caliper back in while also keeping tension on these teeth so it pushes and turns at the same time now before we put everything back together we have our caliper here most times when you buy new brakes they'll come with new shims these little silver rusted pieces here you're going to want to take those off With a screwdriver, you take them off. And then you're going to clean with whatever you have the rusted spots underneath the shims. Clean those off real good. I use a 90 degree die grinder with a cutoff wheel on it and then just, just slightly skim over the areas and that takes the rust off so the pads can move freely. Alright YouTube, so here's our calipers cleaned up, or caliper brackets cleaned up. Like I said, I just use a 90 degree die grinder and I clean those these areas up in between here and here. And then you're also going to want to take these out. Make sure you don't swap these because sometimes they're a little bit different where one has a rubber gasket on them. But 
these aren't super tight or anything like that right now we'll just need to take them out clean them up and put some of the the grease that might come with your brakes on there or if you don't have any some silicone based stuff that doesn't gum up just ask your parts store for the for grease for the slide pins and they'll they'll know what you're talking about so here's what will come with your, your rear brake kit most likely I got these from uh, CarQuest the wherever golds so you'll take your, your new shims and then just line them up here and push them on I'm actually starting to see that these look like they're the wrong shims. So we're gonna probably have to reuse the old ones. We'll just clean them up the same way we did with these. We'll put them back on, clean them up. Just be very careful not to wear through them. All right, so got the old shims back on. I cleaned those up just like I cleaned the underside. Got the pins lubed up. Some people might lube these areas up with like Sil Glide or any of the grease. I personally don't like doing it because the grease can get on the rotor and contaminate it. If you do decide to do that, I'd be very conservative with it because like I said, it can get on the rotor and contaminate it and you'll have hard spots from the rotors getting too hot because the oil stuck on them and you'll probably experience squealing brakes and that's no fun. So now we're gonna move on to the rotors, get those cleaned up before we put everything back together. These from the factory come with a film of oil on the rotors to keep them from rusting. So you're gonna wanna get some soap and water or a degreaser and clean the rotors up real good before you put them on the car. So now we're ready for reassembly. We got our brand new wheel bearing in there. Our rotors clean and dried. We can throw everything back together just like we took it apart. So we got our rotor on there. I'm gonna take our screw, set it in the hole, get it started. Then we'll crank that down. Not too tight, because if you ever do these again, you're gonna hate yourself for making that too tight and you'll probably break it off. They're not for any, any safety reasons, really. It's mainly for assembly in the factory because once you have the wheel on, the lug nuts and the, the wheel assembly will hold the rotor in place. But it's always good practice to leave it how you found it. So we're gonna put that back on. Now that our bolts tightened down, we're gonna take our caliper bracket here and we're going to line it up. And put the bolts back in. So we got our caliper bolted up and tight so now we're going to take our brake pads friction material towards the rotor sorry i know shouldn't have to say that but some people just don't get it so we'll put that in there now some of your brake pads are going to have a squealer tab on there it's usually found on the rear side so we're going to put the one with the squealer tab on the inside of the rotor and put that back in and then we'll bolt our caliper back up. All right, YouTube, so I may have led you astray a little bit. This uh, rear pad here doesn't look like it can fit with the, uh, the caliper bracket mounted up. I'll try and show you what I'm talking about here. The uh, the pad ends up hitting right on the knuckle. You can get one side in but not the other so you'll either be hitting on the top here on the knuckle like this. You're going to be hitting right here and you're not going to be able to get the pad in. So what I recommend is, before putting this caliper bracket on, 
you want to put your pads on there get them in there and then put the assembly on so this is how you're going to want to put it on on the car so you'll have your your brake pads already on and just flip this over and you'll slide it on there uh, I've never seen that personally on any cars that I've worked on before but yeah I did not think that I could fit that rear pad in there without taking the whole bracket off so maybe it'll be different for you just know that that you might run into that issue so once you have your caliper bolts tight back here you're just gonna take your caliper and slide it right on and take your caliper bolts and bolt it on into the pins and tighten those up all right YouTube so that's how you do a left rear wheel bearing and brakes on a 2013 Chevy Malibu before you take off make sure your all your bolts are tight and that you pump the pedal to the floor slowly until it becomes firm thanks like and subscribe if you liked the video if you didn't leave a dislike tell us what we did wrong um, thanks for watching